such an honor to be here with all of you, um, community members and elected officials and public safety officials and people who, land managers, all of us who care about the Yuba in our community. Can you hear me at all? All right, I'm trying to yell. <laughs> My name is Caleb Dardick. I'm the executive director of CIRCLE, the South Yuba River Citizens League. And I want to thank you for gathering here at the beautiful South Fork of the Yuba River in the South Yuba River State Park. I want to thank all of you coming here today and for being present as our community unites to save lives on the Yuba River. After five years of drought and low flows, we have gotten used to summer coming earlier and earlier with people swimming here as early as April. But not this year. With record snowfall, high heat, rapid snow melt, the river has become a dangerous place right now. Too many of the more than 700,000 visitors who are both local and out of town seem to be unaware of this new situation that we are facing. They come here to beat the heat, expecting a cool, gentle water. But the water today is too cold and too fast to swim in. They look down from this bridge, and the water seems to be beckoning to them, like sirens who called out to the sailors of old. And we know what happened to those sailors when they crashed upon the rocks and their ships were sunk. Today, 17 people in California have died in tragic river accidents. This year, we have already lost three on the Yuba River. Let's have a moment of silence to say their names. Jesse Babb. Yoav Timmer, Yaris Johnson Neal, blessed be their memory. Our hearts go out to their families and loved ones. We're here today with one purpose, to prevent any further accidents or tragic loss of life. We're here to share information about the river and its condition so that we can be informed and look out for one another. Since Memorial Day, Circle's volunteer river ambassadors, in partnership with state parks, have been out at the river crossings every weekend, including this location. And generally, they're there to greet visitors, say hello, welcome to the Yuba, pack out what you pack in. But this year, the message is different. Now we're saying, stay out of the river. It's too fast. It's too cold for you to swim safely. Whitney Lowe is here. She's a coordinator from AmeriCorps, working with Circle on our River Ambassador Program with State Parks. And she has been working with over 50 volunteers, speaking to over 500 visitors every weekend. And a lot of people appreciate the message. A lot of people are surprised by the message. But some are indignant. Some are like, I know what I'm doing. I've been coming here for years. What they don't understand is how different this year is. And that's what we're going to talk about today as well. I want to thank the Circle Board. Barbara Getz is here, and the staff that are present, and the community that have turned out. I want to thank the local and regional media who are here to let people know the dangers of, that exist in what is a usually a beautiful and welcoming place. We need the media's help to tell a consistent story now. It's a dangerous and mixed message to warn about water conditions, but to show photos of young men jumping off rocks, or to show young mothers like this one down here with their small child playing near the rapids. It is incredibly ironic that this is happening right now as we speak, that there's a family choosing to be on the rock. We must address this. So we have an incredible lineup of speakers. I'm really honored by all of you who have come out to help get this message out today. Um, we're going to start with Nevada County Supervisor Heidi Hall. Please welcome Heidi. Thank 
thank you all for coming out. Can you hear me all right? Thank you all for coming out today. We are here for one reason, to highlight the absolutely unprecedented danger of this river and other rivers in California right now. When I spent time down here in earlier years, I was always concerned about the danger coming down too early. I have two boys and I taught them two things about this river. It is spectacular and it is dangerous. And you must always be super and highly aware of where you are, what the flows are doing, and what's going on with the temperature. However, this year is unprecedented. I was told by someone who spent a lot of time here that in the last 40 years, they have not seen flows this high and this cold. Uh, even someone who's fit, we're hearing, even someone who's fit, who thinks they can manage the flows and the cold, can get swept away before they know what's happening and can uh, get hit with the cold in such that they can't even get back out within minutes. As a mother with two sons, I've spent plenty of time waiting for my kids to come back from this river in the spring, nervously hoping that they listen to what I told them about safety. This year, they're in their mid-20s this year, and I still felt the need to remind them, and to my deep gratefulness, they both said, we are not going near that river. We understand the danger. We need to get that message out to folks, especially those who don't live here, and as Caleb said, come up here and it looks spectacular. Who doesn't want to jump into that? It is incredibly dangerous. I want to thank Circle for doing so much good work to raise awareness about this river, to have brought this, these people together today to make sure we hear this message. And what I want to say to those who are coming up here for this river or to see this area is please do come visit Nevada County. Please come to our Thursday night and Saturday morning markets. Please come to our Friday night art walks. Please come to our amazing amount of musical events, our great restaurants. Please come and swim in our lakes. But this year, skip the dip in the Yuba. Wait until you hear that it's safe to come up here. It could be August. Skip the dip. Stay away from this river. Keep yourself safe. Share this information with your friends and watch out for your children. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure now to welcome California State Park, Sierra District Chief Ranger, and our partner, Matt Green. First, let me thank everybody for coming and visiting your California State Park. I want to thank all of our partners, our cooperating agencies that help us so much out here, and our visitors that uh, support South Yuba River State Park. I think a lot of good things have already been said. Um, the South Yuba River is a wild and scenic river system. Even in low flows, we advise to use caution out here. Unfortunately, over the last couple of weeks, we've had some uh, we've had some injuries and fatalities, and it's very unfortunate. Even in the best of times, we have incidents out here on a daily basis in the summer and winter. What I'd like to get through to everyone today, and and um, in our visit and to our visitors, is that the the impacts that rescues have out here both on our staff and on our friends from other agencies that have to respond. There's a tremendous impact on the family, friends, and bystanders. But also, when we have to respond to these with all of us having limited resources and wanting to maintain public safety out here, every incident, every incident means one to five agencies coming out here. And these men and women are dedicating their lives to come out here and save people. And each time, so I've been out here too, and I'm lucky to have an incredible staff, and every time they have to come out here to give a Band-Aid, to help somebody that slipped or tripped, or have a major rescue, it is a challenge, and they're putting their own safety at risk. And they want the outcome to, to be that everyone is safe. This is an incredible resource for the people of California and Nevada County. We can all agree on that. We want people to come. 
But obviously with high flows coming from the Sierra Meltoff, the slick rocks that are out there, and just the conditions that everybody can see today, it's still not safe. And we're probably looking at conditions not improving until late July or in August. And what the difficulty is, is when people come out and they see maybe a placid level on the top and, and not a current, but underneath that, there could be fast currents. I've had the pleasure of working on the American and the, and the Yuba, and it's the same thing. We can't do this without the help of the public and our partners, the friends and the family, and the bystanders that come out here telling people to make good decisions when they're out here, keeping their kids off the rocks even when it might seem like it's calm around them, keeping them in the, if they're gonna go into shallow areas, that they're gonna be right with those children. If they choose to put on a uh, life preserver or something on their child, they should know that that's not a preventative measure for their child to leave their child in the river. Because so often in my career and and other first responders have gone to this, is that life preservers can cause that child to become more buoyant and we have to watch them and that sometimes gives us false sense of safety. So I just want everybody to go away with the message today that we're sorry for every incident that might have out here that someone becomes injured or there's a tragic uh, circumstance. But we can't do this on our own. We have limited resources down here as a staff. Probably four of my staff patrolling this river on foot in 100 to 110 degrees of heat with their gear on and trying to be as responsive as possible. And that's not even to mention all, that all the other agencies hot who help us and we couldn't do it without their help. But we need to have a consistent message, message about the conditions out here. Have people work with each other. Talk to each other. Be partners out here when you're enjoying this incredible resource. We know people are still gonna come. There's lots of things to do out here. There could be areas of shallow pools and other areas where you could have you could have your family briefly go in to cool off. But you don't want to leave someone in there if they're not watched. You have to partner up, you have to, we have to do this together. And that's what I'd like to leave you with today. Thank you again for visiting, everyone being here, and thank you for your help. Pat talked about the, the, the responsibility when there is an accident. And I want to introduce next Nevada County Sheriff, Search and Rescue Coordinator, Sergeant Mike Sullivan. Thank you. thank you everyone for coming up. I'd like to first of all thank Circle for putting us together and giving us an opportunity to share the message not only with our community in Nevada County, but the greater area all around. So the Yuba River, as many parts of Nevada County is beautiful. It's glorious. And that's the reason why many people love to come here and love to live here. But this year, it is dangerous. And it's gonna continue to be dangerous for a while. Not only has it claimed lives this year, it still has the potential to claim more. On behalf of the Sheriff and the Sheriff's Department here in Nevada County, I can reassure you that if something happens, we will respond. We sincerely hope we don't have to, but we will respond. But it's important to note, we won't be here within a couple of minutes. If you're from a greater metropolitan area, you're used to your emergency services coming in a very quick time. Up here, our resources are spread out. It can take an extended time to get to this area, not only for the first deputies on scene, but we have an extremely qualified and well-trained search and rescue team. They will come. They will do everything possible that they can do to rescue you alive. However, that takes a while, and it can be very difficult to try and rescue someone in a safe time and reassure that they're okay. I can tell you based on speaking with the families of some of the victims this year, not only is this hard on that immediate family, but the surrounding area as a whole. It is not 
easy for us to lose lives in this community. And it's something we sincerely hope does not happen. This is a dangerous year, but it's a blessed year. It's not very often we get this much water in this beautiful river, but we need to take advantage of it, but we need to be safe. So please continue to come to Nevada County, come enjoy our resources, but be safe and please be extremely cautious around the Yuba River, the Truckee River, and any of our other waterways this year as they're all high and they are all high. Thank you. I would like to now introduce Nevada County Sheriff Search and Rescue Liaison, Jerry Weidler. Good morning. It's hard to uh, add to everything that's been said already this morning. Um, at Search and Rescue, we have approximately 125 volunteers that come out on every rescue that we're called on out to the river. Um, it's important to note that these people are leaving their families at home. Uh, their day jobs, whatever it may be, and they're coming out here to help somebody in need uh, on this beautiful river. Uh, they're putting their lives in danger to help others, and they're willing to do it 24 hours a day, 365. Um, we love this place. It's beautiful. It's extremely dangerous. Um, if somebody does get swept down into the river, our access points are very limited. It takes us, a lot of times we have to come down these extremely steep mountain um, where we get cliffed out or slippery rocks, high water flows. We're wearing PFDs, helmets. Um, it, it's, it, it's taxing on everybody that's out there you know, trying to perform a rescue. So, like I said, I can't reiterate too much more on what they've already said, but uh, please be safe out here, use common sense and enjoy it uh, in a safe manner. Thank you guys very much. I'd like to uh, introduce North San Juan fire engineer, Sean Olson. As well as Battalion Chief Boyd Johnson. I'm Boyd Johnson. Battalion Chief with the North San Juan Fire Protection District, and this is Engineer Sean Olson. North San Juan it protects a large territory, about 70 square miles, three times the size of Manhattan Island, and we're situated between the South Yuba, the Middle Yuba, and the Main Yuba upstream from Bridgeport. We're a volunteer department, and it's a challenge for us to provide service in our territory. We depend on the help from many other agencies in Nevada County and the public acting sensibly in its activities down at the river. And I encourage you to be very cautious during this dangerous time of the year. One of the things that we have done to try to help you is institute a giveaway program for life jackets. And I'd like to turn this over to uh, Sean Olson, who's in charge of this program. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. You can, uh, you can really tell how powerful the river is just by the noise in the background. It's hard to hear back there, so I'll try to speak up as loud as I can. Um, we do a life jacket program. It was introduced in 2013 in memory of Keegan Karavich, who was a victim of the Yuba River this area here. The program has continued every year in an effort to raise awareness of the dangers of our local waterways and to provide the life jackets to the children of our local families. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that, of course, life jackets do not replace adult supervision and they don't make our rivers 100% safe for our children. Um, so when you're at the river, remember to pay close attention to your surroundings and especially to the little ones that are down near the waterways. And I want everyone to have a safe and enjoyable summer. That's all. I'd like to now welcome Nevada County Consolidated Fire Battalion Chief Jim Smith. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having us here. Um, the river is a, it's a very dynamic environment. It's changing yearly. Uh, it changes weekly depending on the flows uh, from higher upstream. So 
pool that you've been in previously, uh, maybe a week before or a year before, is going to be totally different uh, the following week or the following year. Uh, it's important to remember that. We've had three deaths so far on the Yuba, and we actually had a live rescue right behind us last Sunday. Um, these were all people that either went in voluntarily or slipped and fell, as was the case last week. The river is very cold, very dangerous, and very dynamic. So we're urging caution. If you're up visiting and you really need to get in the water, enjoy one of our lakes. We have many lakes around here. We have safe designated swim areas. Uh, enjoy those lakes. That's where you can get in the water and be safe. If you're up here visiting the Yuba and hiking or mountain biking, make sure that you're leaving directions of your travel, the time you left and the time you plan on being back with family or friends. Uh, that, that will aid in our, our help in rescuing if something should go wrong. Uh, again, enjoy the Yuba, but be very cautious. Thank you. In addition to state parks, the Yuba River is also managed by BLM and also by the Tahoe National Forest. And I'm pleased to welcome from the Tahoe National Forest, Yuba River District Ranger, Karen Hayden. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you to our cooperators, to our partners for this opportunity to share information with you and with the people that you'll share this message with. The public owns the land that is the Tahoe National Forest. We want you to come and visit the Tahoe National Forest. Basically, we're from about 3,000 feet elevation on and up into the Sierra Nevadas. There's almost 20 million acres of national forest system lands in California for you to visit. On the Tahoe, we have many campgrounds. We have many day use areas. We have lots of trails to hike on lots of places to fish. We have lots of lakes that you can jump in safely and get back out. Uh, we have backpacking, we have high country, uh, back country opportunities, we've got off-road vehicle and equestrian, we've got cattle grazing, we've got sheep grazing. It's a land of many uses. It's your land and we want you to come and visit it. The information that is available to you on our website will be given to the uh, media and they can post that for you or you can Google it, Tahoe National Forest. We want you to come up and enjoy that forest safely. The Yuba River is not the place to jump in and enjoy it safely right now. Enjoy the lakes, enjoy the small creeks, go hiking on the trails, uh, fish where it is safe to do so, and uh, get home safely from your visits. When there is a need for rescue, when there's a fire, when there's a vehicle accident or some other incident, we do work with all the cooperators that are represented here to help out to uh, get people home safely or to put the fire out. We don't want to do that. We'd rather just have you enjoying your forest the whole time you're here. What I want to do is to tell you, I've got a map that I just want to point out how many roads are not actually open right now. There's a lot of, uh, the good news is we had a lot of rain, we had a lot of snow, we had a lot of rain on snow, we had a lot of flooding. And so what you see on the map is locations that are closed for various reasons, probably because the road has a hole in it, or there's a slide, or there's too many trees that we can't get, on a crop, get through it and get them all cut out. We're opening the roads as fast as we can, and one of the biggest messages that we share daily with hundreds of people is some of the roads are closed. If they're closed, it's for a good reason. It's for public safety. One of the most used roads in Nevada County is Bowman. The Bowman Road is currently closed at Canyon Creek because the crossing of the river is absolutely unsafe. We've blocked it off. People are upset that they can't access various places, but there's nothing we can do to fix those damage sites any faster than we are. We are working to get those roads open. We're doing our best. We want you, again, before you go out into the woods to visit your favorite location, check the website. Give a call to one of our offices. Those numbers are readily available through the media or to Google it. And check in to see if where you want to go is actually accessible. Again, we want you to come to your national forest and uh, we love having all the interaction that we can with the visitors that enjoy the forest. Thank you.
Okay, you guys have been patient, and I know it's very hot, but last but not least, we want to have PG&E, who's a big part of operating our water system, to talk about what's happening and how water is being managed right now and the forces that are at play that are different this year. Please join me in welcoming Power Generation Manager Janet Wall, Walther and PG&E Hydro Operator Ray Farmer. putting this together and, and the opportunity to be here and I will try to t continue to talk louder. Thank you. Um, you know, PG&E is very concerned about public safety as well on these um, river systems that we do operate. For those of you unfamiliar, PG&E operates the Drum Spalding Project. Spalding Reservoir is of course at the um, top of this area. Spalding Reservoir is currently full. So what that means is the snow melt that's coming in is going out. To give you perspective, last year, correct me if I'm wrong here, last year we were spilling around 12 to 15 CFS, cubic feet per second. This year, over the last couple weeks, we have ranged from 800 cubic feet per second to 1,400 cubic feet per second. This is unusual, extremely high flows, moving water and very cold water. So even if you're getting in an area that looks safe, it's extremely cold water and can cause safety issues for yourself just by being in that cold water. So again, pg e is really trying to share the news, not only on this watershed, but we are seeing this throughout our hydro system with the heat, fast snow melt, and it's affecting all of the reservoirs, all of the rivers throughout the state of California. So we really encourage all of the public to pay attention to public safety, listen to your agencies that are out there sharing information with you, and please stay away from the water if it's not safe, if, it, if it's fast moving, and find those other types of things to do in the reservoirs as we talked about. And we really thank Circle for putting this together and helping us all get the public safety message out this year. Thank you. All right, so uh, this is a chance for questions and answers. If there's anybody that you particularly want to speak to or address a question, uh, I would just invite them to come up to answer the question. So do we have any questions? Elias. Matt, do you want to tell